Hi, I'm Alejandro, the Dreamweaver product manager here at Adobe. The Dreamweaver team is pleased to present CSS Designer. It's an intuitive visual editing tool for applying and previewing CSS styling, layout, and other behaviors in real time right within Dreamweaver itself. Let's take a look at a common workflow scenario. Now imagine the following. You are asked to work on a site that is already under development or to make changes to a site that is already live. Let's begin by changing our workspace for the most optimal solution. So here I have the compact workspace. This is intended for easy insertion of element types and other structural components. I'm going to collapse that for now, though, because I've already got a site built out. Now, within the CSS designer itself, I've got a sources subpanel and a media query subpanel. Since these have also already been built out, I'm going to collapse them as well with a single click. Now I'm looking at selectors and properties, and this is a fairly straightforward workspace. So the first thing I want to do is change my logo. First of all, you can see that the logo is overwriting the slogan, and it's also using a font that I find less desirable. So what I've done is I've clicked on the logo. What I can do as well is I can inspect, and by clicking inspect, this creates a reverse inspect from what you find in WebKit, where I can hover elements and their selectors and properties become highlighted in the CSS designer. Highlighting over the logo, I will click the logo to lock it in place, and now I can see a list of selectors that have properties applied to that logo, and, and I can see the properties themselves below. So I'm going to click on Arial, which is a font that I do not want, and within that dialog, click on Manage Fonts. So here we have the Consolidated Manage Fonts workspace. I can look at my Adobe Edge web fonts, uh, any local web fonts that I've set, I can navigate to, and I can build custom font stacks. So within Adobe Edge Web Fonts, there are a couple of fonts that I really like that I'm going to go ahead and select. I can scroll down to Babis New. Um, there's a slab font that I really like called Chunk, and a sans serif font that I really like called Lato. So I'm going to select those three, and when I'm done, I click Done. Now I click on Arial again to choose the, the one that I want from the list. Uh, for this one, I'm going to choose an all-caps font called Babes New. And you can see that it updates in real time. Okay, now I'll pull the whole logo and slogan off the edge of the document. I'm going to click Inspect. And you can see, once again, I can isolate the logo, I can isolate the slogan. But if I hover just below that, I can actually isolate that whole region. So clicking there to lock it in place allows me to go and look at the properties for that element. And you can see here, I've got three classes entitled Logo. And if I click on the first one, you can see that it's set within, within a media query that is uh, min width 769 pixels. If I scroll down, the next one itself is set within a different media query. And finally, the one below that is set globally. This is the one that I want to work with. So I'm going to select this. I'm going to unclick Show Set. And I'm going to scroll down to the padding. And I can uh, select this, set it to 20 pixels, and it pulls my logo and slogan right off the edge of the document. Alternatively, I can trash that, select it again, and using my mouse, I can just drag to the desired effect. You can see it updating in real time in the design surface. Now, if you look below the slogan, you can see my nav buttons are all compressed together, and they too are flush up against the side of the document. So let's create a little bit of space here. I can turn on Inspect, or I can simply click on any of these items, and I can pull up all the selectors that are affecting them. Looking at, those list, at that list of selectors, uh, I can scroll through each of them and determine which one would be the most appropriate to set some styling. The first one I've chosen here is a hover behavior, so we don't want to look at that one right now. The next one below is an anchor link, but if I click Show Set, I see that it's mainly using text controls. So I'm going to keep scrolling through until I find one that's, that's both set globally and has some layout settings as well. And it looks like we've found that one right here on the Nav Items anchor link. Uh, once again, I'm going to click Show Set, and this time, I am going to scroll down to the padding control. I'm going to click the link in the center of the padding control to lock each of the four directions. Once I've done that, I can hover over any of those controls and set it to 20 pixels, which pulls everything off 
to the same amount that the logo was pulled off and also creates nice space below, above, and to the side. Once that's done, let's go ahead and style up the search bar. Clicking Inspect, I can now again hover over the search bar area. And clicking once to lock it in place, I can see in my selectors list, I have two input selectors. Clicking on the first one and once again, choosing Show Set for Show Set Properties. This shows me that I've got only one control, which is controlling the width. And it's a very specific selector. So let's go to the other one, which is Input. And on this Input control, I can see that I've set a height and other values as well. So what I wanna do now is set a, maybe some, some styling that I might find fairly attractive. So I, I think I'm gonna set the border radius. And within the Properties panel itself, this is quite easy to do. I can click on this plus sign, which will add a CSS property, simply type the word border dash R, and you can see in the menu that pops up, border radius is automatically selected. So I'm gonna choose that, and automatically below the border radius, I get my visual control. Clicking the link in the middle, I can now set the border radius for any corner, and it will affect all the additional corners. So looking at the height, which is 40 pixels, I know that I can set this to at least 20 pixels and I'll have a nice, smooth, rounded effect creating an oval. Now if I click out of that, you can see that I've got a nice rounded, rounded corner search bar, but I've got a search button which is still square and not fitting, kind of like a square peg round hole. So let's inspect once again and go to the search bar itself and try to find the selector that's most appropriate for this one. So. Looking through the list of selectors, it's pretty clear we have a couple of selectors that are uh, controlling the hover behavior, and those aren't the ones we want. Looking at the third one as well, we see we still have a hover behavior, so that leaves the fourth one, which doesn't have any properties set just yet. So I'm gonna scroll below to see if there's anything with additional context. And now I've found that there are some layout, text, and background controls for this search button. So this selector seems like a good candidate, for making edits. Once again, I'm gonna click on the plus sign to add a CSS property, type in border dash R for border radius, allow it to come up automatically, and just to keep things simple, I'm gonna set this one to 20 pixels as well. So now everything is flush within the search bar. All right, let's experiment with text shadow a little bit and see if anything jumps out at us. Go ahead and click on the word search. Notice the selectors and properties update. You can choose the nav container anchor link from this list as it is the most likely to affect text properties. Sure enough, in the properties below, you see several text properties update. Here's where we'll add a text shadow. Uncheck the show set box and click on the T icon for text. Under text shadow, go ahead and choose the vertical shadow and add one pixel of shadow to that. And in color, you can click where it says undefined and type the word white. Now, this isn't looking so good, so let's try and change the actual color of the anchor link itself. Scrolling up slightly, you can see the color is set to white, so let's try and set that to a slight gray color. Taking a closer look, this isn't actually working for me, so I'm gonna go ahead and undo everything I just did, which is quite easy with the CSS designer. I can set the color back to white simply by typing the word white, and I can undo the text shadow by hovering over the word text shadow and mousing over to the right-hand side where I have two controls. One lets me disable it temporarily, and the other lets me delete it entirely. So I'm gonna click the trash can and remove that property entirely. Let's live with that text shadow for this one. However, when I hover over the word, it turns to a dark gray and gets rather lost within the button so I do want to change the hover color. Clicking on that itself doesn't change the selectors, but I can see in the list above, there's an identical selector with a hover behavior. So clicking that, I can go ahead and click Show Set, and I can change the color, which is a darker gray. I can change that to a slightly lighter gray. This accomplishes the effect of a change in the behavior, but a much more subtle effect, and the word no longer gets lost. Let's wrap up by adding some gradient to the search button. Click Inspect once more and select the search button. 
Looking in the list of properties, you can see a background color that's set to hover. And if you scroll down, you can see a background color which will control the non-hover behavior. So let's select that. And looking in the selectors list now, you can see that context is given to the nav container button selector. Go ahead and click that. And with show set checked, you can see a redacted list of properties, which includes some layout, some text, some border, and background controls. Now with background color selected, uncheck show set and using the icons in the subheading, click on the gray to white gradient swatch. This is the background shortcut. You will see the background color is set to a pastel aqua blue. Go ahead and click on this value and copy it. This will be useful later when we set a gradient. Looking below, you can see a gradient with an empty swatch. Go ahead and click that swatch to bring up the gradient control. Go ahead and select the top color stop. Beside the text entry field, you will see three color models, RGBA, HEX, and HSLA. With HEX selected, go ahead and paste in the color value from the other selector. Now, you can go back to RGBA and slide the third slider down to around 0.7, which will create some opacity and give the gradient a more subtle effect. Now in the main color area, simply drag the circle to a desired shade of darker blue. Now select the bottom color stop, which is currently defaulted to red, and with hex selected, once again, paste in the value from the other selector. This will create a subtle gradient on the search button. Hopefully you found this demo instructive and you'll enjoy using Dreamweaver's new CSS designer. And please write to us on the forums or social channels and let us know your successes and struggles with Dreamweaver. Follow us at, at Dreamweaver and follow me at, at Aesthetic Grace. Thank you for watching.